Many of those who attend events here at Stokes Masonic Lodge in Concord turn off Brumley Street onto the driveway leading to the lodge without really noticing the locked and barred doors to their left, which guard an opening in the hillside. Yet behind that gate lies the story of a distant period in Concord's past when the dream of treasure led to the establishment of gold mines within a quarter mile of the town square. I'm Clarence Horton. On behalf of Cabarrus County and all those persons and organizations dedicated to her heritage and its preservation, welcome to another installment of Historical Moments, the story of old Cabarrus and her people. Old Concord dates her history back to the mid-1790s when town commissioners purchased 26 acres of land from local farmer Samuel Huey on which to establish a new town and build public buildings. In 1796, surveyors divided the 26 acres into 45 building lots and laid out two principal streets in the middle of which the courthouse would be built. To the east of the town site, the land dropped down to nearby Three Mile Branch. Things went very slowly in the new sleepy courthouse village until a time when news circulated quickly around the county that gold nuggets had been discovered in Little Meadow Creek on the land of farmer John Reed. Excitement spread and men searched for nuggets along the banks of the county's creeks. When no nuggets were found on their land, the Hueys returned to their plows and continued to till their land. The property remained in the Huey family until the 1830s when it was sold to a local hunter and marksman named Reinhold Suther. Mr. Suther believed there was gold on the old property and he began to dig pits and to search for gold nuggets on his own property. The process was laborious and expensive and the mine was never a great financial success. In 1873, Mr. Suther sold the 18 acres of mine property to a local farmer named Alfred Leidecker for $325. Mr. Leidecker earned a quick profit on his purchase, selling the property the following year to a local Concord merchant and druggist named Joel Reed. Mr. Reed, although he shares a family name with John Reed, owner of the more famous Reed Gold Mine, in eastern Cabarrus County was apparently no relation. Joel Reed was born in Rowan County. He and his lovely Ardell County bride, Ellen Cresswell Reed, came to Cabarrus County just before the 1850 census. He settled in Concord where he ran a grocery store and then became a very successful druggist. Joel Reed saw the promise in the small village even with its muddy streets and log buildings, and began to invest in town property and lots. He also speculated in gold mining property and purchased the old Garmin mine, which was located adjacent to the Reed Gold Mine in eastern Cabarrus. He had an interest in other local gold mines also. At least by 1882, Joel Reed was running a mining operation almost full time on the old Huey Suther property. According to Gray's 1882 map of Concord, there were two main shafts to the mine. One ran almost directly east in the direction of log or depot streets. The other ran almost directly west under Church Street, ending at a point near the back wall of the old Charles Cannon property. At substantial cost, Mr. Reed bought a Chilean mill and rockers with which to crush the ore that was taken out of the mine and attempt to separate the heavier gold from the other material. Reed's miners unsuccessfully searched for the mother load for many years, even digging one shaft that was at least 54 feet in depth. 
Reed finally decided to abandon the mining operation and allow other speculators to try their luck. In 1894, he leased the mine with an option to purchase to Mr. W.B. Church. Church operated the mine for a year, then renewed his option, but finally abandoned the operation himself. Thus, when Joel Reed died in 1900, the mine property was still in the Reed family and subject to division among his heirs. When Joel Reed's property was divided among his heirs in 1905, the old mine property passed to his oldest son, Dr. John F. Reed. Dr. Reed had been born in the Reed home place on North Union Street, adjacent to Old Central Methodist Church and its parsonage. The home was situated near the street and passerbys enjoyed stopping to look at the flower-filled front yard Ellen Reed always provided them. Dr. Reed's small office was located adjacent to the home place and between it and the old St. Cloud Hotel, the forerunner of today's Hotel Concord. Dr. Reed was quite an accomplished musician and the townspeople always knew that the doctor was in residence when they heard the sound of fiddle music coming from his office. In later life, Dr. Reed married one of Concord's most eligible school marms, Miss Mary Lewis Harris. Miss Harris was not only an accomplished teacher, she was the organist at First Presbyterian Church and also the church historian. Their marriage in August 1921 was one of the society highlights of the year. In 1931, Dr. Reed died in the same room in the same home where he was born, and his property passed to his widow. Part of the old mine property, which lay along Crestwell Avenue, was subdivided into lots. The street itself was named in honor of Dr. Reed's mother, Ellen Cresswell. The hollow, however, was not sold at that time. Later, in 1953, Ms. Reed sold the old mine property to Stokes Masonic Lodge, in which Dr. Reed had been a member since 1896. That's not the end of our story, however. In 1949, Cabarrus County residents celebrated the 150th anniversary of the 1799 discovery of gold in Little Meadow Creek in Cabarrus County. As a part of that celebration, mining equipment and apparatus was displayed. Among those things were the old scales and weights that Joel Reed used in his old mine off Brumley. Following the end of the celebration in December 1949, his widow, Mary Lewis Reed, donated the apparatus from the mine to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, where it still resides to this day, a memorial to those golden years before cotton became king. We're glad you were able to be with us today as we turn another faded page in the history of Old Cabarrus County, this special place. We hope to see you again real soon.